Well, it is official. The United States is now number two. The Chinese economy just overtook the U.S. to become the largest in the world. And it's really not a surprise here. Good evening, friends. We start tonight with jobs in the economy and just how it plays into this political season. All the candidates are wishing that it's going to be a lot better. In fact, the remaining candidates on both sides are touting a better economy and painting a brighter future for the middle class in this country. Well, that future just can't come fast enough for some sectors of the economy. The manufacturing sector continues to get pounded by China. Some of the candidates talk about it some of the time. The steel industry has seen China violate every trade agreement, and our government does very little or nothing about it. On Monday, the United Steelworkers filed a grievance against China's aluminum industry trade practices. China's policies have depressed prices and caused a global imbalance. Experts in the steel industry say this is a direct threat to American jobs, and the industry is asking the United States government to step in. While sanction threats against Russia send ripples of panic across the world of investment, there's still those who remain unfazed by the political turmoil. How big is the risk of putting your trust in the Russian market? And how long until the anxiety blows over? Well, we ask the man who knows all about following the money. Renowned investor, Jim Rogers is our guest today. With the West pushing Russia further away, Moscow securing a historic pivot to Asia. Having signed hundreds of billions of dollars worth of deals, Russia and China are closer than ever before. Should the West be worried? Did it fail in its proclaimed mission of isolating Russia? And are all the sanctioned threats just undermining trust in the dollar? In Chicago, Chinese and American business leaders have wrapped up the first day of the annual Joint Commission on Commerce and Trade. For the first time in 25 years, hundreds of representatives from both countries were invited. Hi, Michelle. Well, it has been a very busy day here in Chicago for the private sector. Those 100 representatives just representing the private sector alone, they have had discussions on coordinating food safety, increasing investment on both sides of the Pacific, increasing travel and tourism between the nations. And we are also getting new details on an agreement reached between eight Chinese cities, including Shanghai and Beijing, and the city of Chicago. They will increase trade for small and medium-sized businesses. Here's China's vice premier announcing the agreement Wednesday. I'm happy to learn that eight cities will build a small and medium-sized business service mechanism together with Chicago and the Chinese Consular General will appoint a special official to be responsible for connecting the businesses between the two sides. Across the Hudson River from downtown Manhattan, Jersey City is changing fast. The once quiet backyard of New York is seeing a construction boom, and much of it is funded by Chinese companies. In just about 18 months, this site will become two apartment high-rises, and behind it, a Chinese company, China Construction America. London Black Taxi will need to go international. Export's going to be important by 2020. This summer, Geely in Chinese means lucky, and certainly any new enterprise needs a little bit of that. However, the injection of $400 million will certainly help. Richard Bessick, CGTN at the London Taxi Company, Coventry, England. Michigan-based A123 Systems is surviving and thriving after being acquired by Hangzhou-based Wanjiang during a bankruptcy. In just 18 short months, A123 turned itself around and is back on top of their industry. Had an American company bought A123, we wouldn't be talking today. This facility in Michigan wouldn't exist. The jobs that are here would have been gone, and that that American company would have um, just used A123's IP. They had no intention of running the business. This lie is going to change. 
Ping Yi is showing off his latest corporate investment project, a fully electric car made by a formerly bankrupt American company that this Chinese billionaire bought two years ago. This one was made out of uh, Finland in Europe. Okay. But we brought the production back to the United States. Now, Karma Automotive cars are made in California, and the number of U.S. employees has gone up from 22 to almost 1,000 as part of this growing conglomerate One China America. Forest City is a small town near the Mississippi River, where the Chinese textile giant Shandong Ruyi is planning a $410 million investment to spin yarn at a factory where local workers once built Japanese televisions. Mayor Larry Bryant says the company is already working on training programs at the local community college. Armed with their SA-80s, sharpshooters and sniper rifles, B Company 3 rifles lead the attack. With heavy weapon support from their jackal vehicles, they soon hone in on the enemy positions. President Donald Trump's Bastille Day-inspired grand military parade will have to wait, announcing on Twitter the local politicians who run Washington, D.C. poorly know a windfall when they see it. When asked to give us a price for holding a great celebratory military parade, they wanted a number so ridiculously high that I canceled it. The Commander-in-Chief today called a halt to his plans for a Veterans Day military parade this year, saying the now $92 million price tag is ridiculously high. A nuclear-capable Russian bomber intercepted by the U.S. was intercepted by U.S. jets off the coast of Alaska. We will remember their faces, their voices, their stories, their courage, and their love. And we will remember that free people are never at the mercy of evil because our destiny is always in our hands. This is a Fox News alert just in now. Pentagon officials say U.S. warplanes intercepted a pair of nuclear-capable Russian bombers yesterday as they flew near Alaska. The North American Aerospace Defense Command says the Russian formation never entered U.S. or Russian airspace in that area. It's the second time this month well, discussions for a new NAFTA deal have officially stopped for the weekend, and U.S. President Donald Trump is hinting that he may be losing patience with the process. Laura McQuillan has more on this story. Arthi, it's the weekend, but no let up from Donald Trump. The pressure on Canada to get a NAFTA deal. September 1st. Introducing a number of substantial changes to the military justice system to enhance fairness and flexibility. Presiding officers must be fully up to speed on these changes in order to continue to exercise their duties and must complete mandatory training before September 1st. Defense Minister Harjit Sajjan made the announcement at Canadian Forces Base Gagetown with the pilot program set to start in New Brunswick in the fall before rolling out across Canada. One that the US President likes now. He's making more threats about potential auto tariffs for Canada. Here's what he told a rally in North Dakota. So every time I have a problem with any of these, you know, many of these countries that we're talking about, especially the big car countries, uh, I just say, okay, look, we can't make those deals. That's okay. I'm going to put a 20% tax on your cars. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll agree. We'll agree. I mean, actually, in some countries, including Canada, attacks on cars would be the ruination of the country. Now, Donald Trump there warning the ruination of Canada if he does go ahead with these threatened auto tariffs. Now, he's getting some criticism for being too aggressive, too blunt with that rhetoric as the negotiations continue. But on the other side, Canada's getting some flack for playing its cards too close to its chest. We've seen the Foreign Affairs Minister, Christia Freeland, repeatedly saying she's not going to negotiate this in public.
terrorists are said to be almost ready to stage a chemical attack to frame the Assad regime. The warning has come from Russia's defence ministry again, which says it has evidence that members of terror organisations, including al-Nusra, met with the controversial rescue group, the White Helmets, on Friday. Well, the news comes amid top-level international discussions on how to settle the Idlib conflict. On Friday, the 15 members of the UN Security Council met over the issue. And on the same day, the Russian, Turkish and Iranian presidents held talks in Tehran on the situation. Товарищи офицеры и генералы, уважаемые представители Народно-освободительной армии Китая и вооруженных сил Монголии, рад приветствовать всех вас всех участников маневров «Восток-2018». Наша армия и флот впервые проходят столь сложный и масштабный экзамен. В маневрах задействован личный состав двух военных округов и двух флотов Северного и Пекарского.